Hey folks, how we doing today? It's a beautiful day here in East Tennessee and I'm back out here on the bucket again. I miss my old bucket out here in the yard. Uh, I'll be doing a new video for y'all today. I'm going to be putting a whole lot of videos on YouTube from now on. I'm back on YouTube, thank goodness. Um, but today we're going to go over how to not scorch your corn when you're when you're cooking your corn. So you're doing an all grain mash. You just want to convert your corn so you don't have to use as much sugar to mash. So I, I have a way that, that you can cook your corn and you'll never scorch it. You don't have to sit there and stir it for an hour or nothing like that. We're going to go over that and a new corn that we have that we're going to keep in stock uh, all the time. I think it makes better liquor than any of the heirlooms or white corn or anything. This is just an awesome yellow corn, and it's a distiller's corn. So we're going to go over that. Now I'm, I'm also going to be doing some pickling today, showing you all how to keep you all some snacks around the steel house or in your truck when you're hunting or something. So we're going to be going over that too. So, hey, y'all hang around with us. I'm going to take a drink. We're going to get right into it. All right, guys, we're back. What I've got planned for today is cooking your corn. You know, if you're trying to get the starches, cook the starches out of your corn so you can convert it. Well, most of the time you have to sit there and keep stirring and stirring and stirring to keep it from, you know, uh, scorching. So I've got a big canning pot here, and then I've got another smaller canning pot here. It holds about five gallons. And then this is the rack that came with this canning pot. You turn the rack upside down, and that holds this pot up off the bottom of this pot. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to put our corn and our water in here. Then we're going to fill this up full of water, and we're going to heat that water around this pot, and we're going to water bath this corn and cook it. And we're going to see just how well it works. So y'all hang out, come back here in a minute, and we'll get started on this. Okay, guys, uh, we're going to get our corn put in here. And what this is, this is a, it's an old corn, but it's a new corn that we had found. And I found a whole bunch of it. I can keep it in stock year round. And this is some of the stuff that could usually ship the next day. If you go to our website, stickycreek.com, you'll see a tab on there that says ships next day. And that's all the stuff that we have available to package and ship. You know, the next day, it's already ready to go. Uh, this is a distiller's corn. It's a very high starch distiller's corn. It is a non-GMO corn. So that means it's not sprayed to round up or none of that. You know, you have to actually uh, cultivate this. And uh, I found so much of it, I could keep it year round. It's a very high starch corn. It actually has more starch than my silage corn does. And it makes a sweet liquor. I think this makes better liquor than any of the heirloom corns, blues, and reds. Uh, it's actually better than the white corn. And that's another thing I need to talk to y'all too about. We're going to have white corn in in the next two to three weeks. They're just now starting to combine it. And most of the white corn that I wouldn't looked at, it just had way too many weevils in it for me. Uh, weevil is a grain bug, a grain grain weevil. So uh, if, it only, if I only see three or four, it's fine. It's not going to hurt your mash. But if it's done, eat the whole center out of the grain. I don't want that grain. So we're waiting on new crop to come in on white corn. But that's what this is. Uh, I'm going to talk to you all a little bit about this corn and how I found it and the man who uh, who, who put me on the track of it. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about him here throughout the video. His name was Shiner Sam. And uh, brother, I'm going to miss you. But we're going to make this corn work just like we talked about. So we're going to put 10 pounds of corn in this pot. Right there. And then, which filled it up, you know, almost half full. Then we're going to fill that up full of water. And this is basically, I guess it's kind of like steaming, you know, a, a steam jacketed a pot or something. We're just going to be using water, you know. It's what we could do at home. So it's a 10 pound of corn now. Well, this corn. I'm going to be mashing it in, but I'm not trying to convert it for a all grain mash. I'm just making a 10 gallon mash out of this because this is a 10 gallon kit for the Shiner Sam uh, tribute kit. 
So I'm just wanting to cook it, get the starches out, and convert it with some six-row barley. And uh, that way I don't have to add as much sugar to my mash to get the starting gravity that, I, that I'd like. And uh, we're going to go over enzymes and stuff, too, uh, and, and everything like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out a big shout-out to an old boy that has liquid enzymes and stuff, uh, good, great enzymes. I just don't use them because I prefer my six-row barley. It's just what I know. But if you use liquid enzymes, this right here, this kid will work for you, too. Let's get her filled up here. Then the next thing we're going to do is fill up. This one. The reason you need to uh, get your corn and water in this first, because if you go and put a bunch of water in that bottom pot, then fill this up, then you go run it over. So always make sure you fill up your your inside pot before you still fill up your outside pot. I'm gonna get some water in this. Y'all come back here in a minute. We're gonna talk to you some more. Get this heated up. And we're gonna go over here and do a little bit of cooking. All right, guys. We got our water and our corn and our inside uh, pot and then I've got water about at probably two inches from the top of the bottom pot that way if it does get to boil or something but the theory I have of this is this pot can only get as hot as that water does so and there's no nothing no direct heat to the bottom of your corn so you're not you're not going to scorch it we're going to see how it works this is the first time I've done this but I thought about it why not sit here with y'all and we're going to experiment if it works great Maybe something you could use at home. Uh, the burner that I am using, it's a Cook Camp. It's a 200,000 BTU banjo burner. I've got a 30 PSI regulator, adjustable regulator on it. They're awesome. If you get a chance, get you one of those burners. These things work great. So, uh, we're going to get off of here right now. I'm going to go over here at my cook station. So we can start pickling some stuff. We're going to let this start heating up. We're going to check on it periodically. I'm going to talk to you all a little bit more. So y'all come on back with us here in just a few minutes. All right, guys, we're back. As you can see, we're going to be making some snacks right here that you can keep. For, they keep forever, just about a long time. And uh, you can just snack on them if you're at the steel house or going hunting or wherever. I usually keep the court in the truck, but I'm out, so I've got to pickle me some more stuff. Uh, our experiment's working perfect. Uh, the water around the inside, the corn... It's 203 degrees, and the corn that's cooking is sitting there at a steady 165 and moving up. So it's actually heating it up slow, but it's cooking. I don't have to stir it that much. I don't have to sit there and watch it. So we're going to see how that works out here in just a few minutes. All right, what I have here, guys, is I've got some garlic cloves, some onions. We got boiled eggs, hard boiled eggs, little smokies. Pack of hot dogs. I'll make sure you get the cheapest hot dog you can find because they have more fillers in them and they're going to absorb your mixture a lot better when you pickle these. We have pickling spice. This has already got like cloves and bay leaves and peppercorns and all that in it. We got some stale cracker Cajun two step. I love that stuff. Got Texas peat hot sauce. We have four cups of vinegar in my jar. We have some. Uh, pickling salt. Now you don't have to use pickling salt. You can use regular table salt as long as it's non-iodized. It don't need to be iodized. You can't use the iodized salt. So I just get the pickling salt. It's like three pounds for four dollars. So no big deal. We have our four quarts here. Out there's what we're going to be filling up today when we pickle this. Uh, I'm going to be doing six cups of water, four cups of vinegar, and right at a half a cup of pickling salt. And what you and what you want to do, you want to pour all this in here. You want to heat this up. You don't want to. It don't have to be at a rolling boil as long as it's good and hot. Okay, we're gonna turn that on. Get it hot. Uh, this right here is gonna be our mixture. We're gonna add this stuff to it after it gets hot and cooked for a little while. So y'all come back here in a few minutes. I'm going to cut these hot dogs up. Get everything ready to go in the jars. We're going to start jarring this stuff up. I want to talk to y'all for a little bit while I do that. All right, guys, we're back. And I've got my water and my vinegar in here heating up right now. And I'm going to put my pickling salt in there as soon as it starts getting warm enough to dissolve it. 
What I've done is I took my pack of hot dogs. Make sure it's cheap hot dogs. I just cut them in thirds, you know, something like that right there. And then we have our little smokies. We've got whole cloves of garlic right here. You're going to put them in the bottom of the jar. We've got our onions and our eggs. So we're going to start packing these jars. What I like to do is go ahead and put an onion in the bottom. And get, you know, two or three. That's one big garlic clove, so I need two or three little ones. No big deal. We're just going to stick an egg in there and another onion. You just keep stacking it like that. I'm going to put some little smokies. A few hot dogs. Just going to keep layering it up like that. I like the onions. I love pickled onions. So I put quite a few pickled onions in mine. It's just the way we do it. And then I need another egg or two. All right, then we're going to throw some more onions. Some more little smokies. You can just pickle this right sausage like this right here if you want to. It is you know, it really don't matter how you do it. Just tamp it down. Another onion. I only ended up with a few eggs here, so I only had a dozen. We'll just do it like that. We'll top it, top it off a couple little smokies and a piece of hot dog. Get it down in there. You want it? You want it to where you could uh, fill it up and make sure your liquid's over the top. What I want to talk to y'all about, we had a brother passed away last week, Shiner Sam, and uh, this distiller's corn, this yellow distiller's corn I come up with, he uh, he's the one that told me about it. We talked a lot on the phone about different mashes and stuff, and uh, he kept talking about an old school corn mash that was made with yellow distiller's corn. So I looked around and I finally found it, and this stuff's awesome. It's got a great, great high starch to it. It converts excellent. So, uh, in memory of him, I made two 55-gallon drums, a 100-gallon mash out of that corn. Just use that corn like he talked about, the sugar and the yeast. And, man, it works better than any corn I've ever used. It's not malted. I'm going to be malting some of it, but as a tribute to Sam, I'm going to be doing a, a Shiner Sam tribute kit just for him. And uh, you'll just be getting that corn. You'll get the instructions on how to do it, and you'll be getting a uh, the yeast and all that stuff and i think with each kit we're going to put a free pack of shiner's beard in it so you could age this this corn whiskey and that's what he was talking about and i believe that there'll be a good tribute for sam he will be sorely missed i know i'll miss him i miss talking to him right now and uh he was a great person to have in the community uh, he was a great liquor maker uh and everything so let's just remember sam and his family this week, and another one that passed was Jim Tom. That kind of hurt me pretty bad. I know Jim Tom. Uh, so let's keep Jim Tom's family and everybody in our, in our thoughts and prayers. I just want to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about that kid a little bit more and that corn here just a little bit. I got me three pieces of garlic down in there. We'll put me an onion in it. Put me an egg. Some hot dogs. I like them pickle hot dogs. They're pretty good. A few Smokies. Put me another one. It don't matter how you layer this. You know, you don't even really have to layer it, I don't reckon. I just I just enjoy layering it like that. Another egg, two eggs, another hot dog, another onion, some little smokies, onion, another hot dog. I like him hot dog. And uh, but let's just remember them people. And Shiner Sam was a great man. He treated every one of us with respect and he loved everybody and in uh in this community there's been so much arguing and and people against this person that person just you know there's been so much stuff going on it i realize now that sam was right that we should all get along and we should all work together and uh he showed me that and he really helped me out on that so i just want to put that out there but we do have a shiner sam tribute kit so Y'all get ready to order one, get on stickycreek.com, and it will be one that will ship the next day. So you don't have to wait on it. It'll be, be at your house three days after you order it and uh, go from there. But, yeah, it's just uh, it's just something I want to put together for him, you know, to kind of keep keep his his legacy and, and stuff alive, something that he was passionate about. And he really liked that old corn, and I actually found it, and uh, I'm able to get it now. So let's just remember him. All right, guys, 
I'm gonna get these jars filled up. We're gonna get this right here done. We're gonna go check on our corn that's cooking. I'll come back here in a minute. All right, guys. My pickling brine, it's getting on up to temperature. It's getting pretty hot. So we're gonna add our pickling spice and our other seasonings at this time. So we could all get, you know, together and work everything out of the spices and everything for us so we can pour it in there. I did just check on our corn. You know, I'm kind of liking that. I don't have to go stir it constantly. I don't have to worry about it scorching if I have to leave it. I just go over and, and stir it. And it's sitting, the outside water's at 201, and the corn itself is right around 170. So it's coming up slow, so you don't have to worry about it scorching. So once it gets up there about 190, I'm going to hold it at 190 for about an hour to an hour and a half and just see what it does. So let's get these spices in this. On this pickling spice, I just usually guess at it, you know, a couple of tables, tablespoons or something of it, you know, whatever. It's got everything in it that you need. My two-step, any Cajun season works for this, you put whatever season you want to. Do it your way. But I like this two-step fire. I'm going to put quite a bit of heat in there. And then for this recipe, you need one 12-ounce bottle of hot sauce. This is Texas peat. I like Texas peat. It's got a good pepper taste to it. We're going to pour it off in there, the whole bottle. So there we go. We're going to let this right here simmer, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Let everything get mixed together. And uh, Miss Real will come over and show you a little video of what's in there. What there's some pretty stuff. It smells good. You can see our pickling spice and everything in there. So we're going to let that there simmer and get all mixed up together. Then we're going to pour it in here and we're going to shut our jars up. Six to ten days later, we have a snack. So y'all come back here in just a few. All right, guys. I'm letting my pickling solution cool just a little bit. It's already cooked. It's done. I just didn't want it so hot for it in the jars. Come over and check my corn. And the water that's in this big pot is 209 degrees. And this has been steady at 185 for about 15 minutes. So I believe I'm going to be able to keep it there. But the good thing is I don't have to sit here and stir it and babysit it. It being a water bath like that, I just cut the cell, break that corn up. And you can see that corn's already getting sticky. See there? Getting sticky. So it's, and it's getting thick. See how thick it is now? So this is cooking that corn awesome. It may take a little bit longer to get it heated up. But like right now, there's nothing sticking to the bottom. I can just move it around with that thing, and it is, it's it's bringing the starches out as thick as it's getting. So y'all hang out, we'll be back here in just a minute. We'll get this pickling video done here, and we'll come back to this corn. I may even throw some six-row malted barley in here when it's done. It gets cooled down about 150, 155, and we'll see what we can make here. All right, guys, uh, we're back over here. We're going to be pickling our mixture we have here i've got everything done in the pot and it's here for a minute it's still pretty hot but i just didn't want it too hot it bust these jars well i need to give it a good stir first got ahead of myself we get it stirred up here we're going to pour this pickling solution over in here <coughs> now you want it to where it covers everything so we just pour in there it covers everything if you have to push some down you, you can These jars may even seal themselves as hot as that is. And that's fine. Let them seal. We got a little left over, but that ain't no big deal. Ain't that pretty, guys? And this right here, it's the excess. I love it. Uh, the onions especially, and the, the hot dogs, but the eggs are good in it. And what you want to do, is when you get your lid on there, get it secured, turn it upside down. That makes sure that pickling solution covers everything in there. And uh, turn it upside down for a day or two. Then you turn it back over. I'll get my other lid here. Sorry, guys. I got lost train of thought. Uh, so much stuff going on. But there you go, guys. That's... Pickled eggs and sausage. 
it's it's an excellent recipe and you'll love it. It's better than just pickling salt and vinegar or, you know, the old beet juice or whatever. This right here is something that's special. So uh, let it sit, like I said, six to ten days. You put it in the fridge, you leave it out. It's got enough pickling salt in it. It's going to cure it. So up there is that. Yeah, I'll come back. We're going to be doing something with some corn and uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something, man. All right, guys. This worked excellent. And matter of fact, this is the best I've ever cooked any corn. Uh, the thing about doing it in a water bath like this is, yeah, it took me about 30 more minutes longer to get it up to temperature to where I wanted it to cook. But nothing stuck in the bottom. You can see that corn is cooked. Look at that. It cooked that corn. All the starch is out of it. There's nothing stuck on the bottom. There's nothing scorched. It never boiled. It never bubbled. And I think the water bath method is the way to go if you're, if you're doing 5 to 20 gallon mashes. This is the way to do it. You just put your corn and water in there. Walk off. Go do something else. Come back in 20 minutes. Give it a stir. Keep it off the bottom. I mean, I, I stirred this a total of maybe four times throughout two hours. Uh, I held it. It actually cooked a little bit better around 175, 180 is where I held it at with the water. I kept the burner turned on as low as it'll go right before it went out. It done awesome. So you guys out there with the 5 to 20 gallon steel and you like cooking your grains, your corn and stuff, this right here is, to me, the way to go. Uh, the biggest thing I can tell you is get a rack or get you one of these cannon pots with a rack. So you can put the rack up under in your bigger pot. That way you got water contact on every part of this pot. I believe out there is the trick to it. But I'm going to let this cool down to 150, 155. We're going to add our malted six-row barley to it and see what kind of conversion we get with it. I'd, I'm doing a 10-gallon mash with this, so I'm not looking for, you know, a straight all grain. I only put 10 pounds of corn in this. I'm looking to convert enough sugars to where if my hydrometer is at 102 or 103, I don't have to add as much cane sugar to it to get it up there. That's what I'm doing with this. Just another way to make a mash, guys. There's thousands of ways out there. So come on back here in just a minute. We're going to talk about enzymes and converting sugars in corn. We're going to go over two different ways that you could do that. So come on back here in just a minute. All right, guys. Uh, first thing I want to start off with before I do this about the enzymes is I just appreciate you all tuning in. And uh, I, I appreciate all the support. And uh, brothers and sisters, as I've met off YouTube, I'm not going to be leaving YouTube anymore. You're going to find me right here maybe three, four times a week, especially on Sunday. We're going to bring the Sunday show back. We'll be doing a lot of different things with different people across the country. And But I just wanted to say thank you all for all your support, the orders that we get and everything. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, what we're going to go over right now is... The different enzymes that you could use to convert your sugar or starches into sugar. Now, that process that I did to cook that corn, I believe that would work great, like I said, for people with 5 to 20 gallon steels, maybe even up to a 30 if you had a big enough pot. You know, and because it's inexpensive, you don't have to have a whole bunch of equipment. You're just putting a smaller pot in a bigger pot and you're just water bathing it with boiling water, which that never got boiling. I got it up to 210, and I just kept it at 210, and it worked perfect. And I didn't have to stir it that much. You don't have to stand over it for 90 minutes and stir it. Uh, it worked out great. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to tr try to convert all the starches into sugar that I did in that and then put it in my 10-gallon mash barrel, add, add water to it to where I'm at 10 gallons. Then I'm going to take a hydrometer reading, See where my gravity is and see how much sugar I need to add. I'm just trying to, you know, it's just a different way to make a mash. Uh, for you guys that's wanting to add three pound per gallon of grain and cook it, then you could convert all the sugar and that'd have a perfect gravity. But there's two ways that I that I know to do that. Uh, with a good malted barley, it's a six row barley, and a six row has a lot of diastatic power. Two row really don't. And wheat. There is some wheats out there that has just a high diastatic power as six-row barley when malted. The other way is with liquid enzymes. Uh, I've never used these, 
because I've always just, I, you know, you know me, I'm old school. I like to use my old, my old grains and stuff, stuff you can grow. But I'm not against the new school way of doing anything. And uh, I might even use this. And no, they don't sponsor me. Uh, they don't promote me in any way. But I've heard a lot of people talk a lot of good things about the products. And that's Broken Bones Distillery. Uh, this is the liquid glucose. And this is their high temp liquid alpha. Uh, these guys, you know, Prohibition and Shoe and them boys, they're all good people. And uh, I just wanted to give you two different options. You may want to use a liquid enzyme. Or you may be like me, old school, and using grains to convert my sugars. And uh, But that there just gives you two different options on the enzymes. Uh, if you want some liquid enzymes, contact these boys, Broken Bones. They, they'll get it out to you pretty quick, and you'll get what you need, and they'll be able to help you. I can't help you use this because I don't know how to. I know how to use this. So they'll be able to help you use this and tell you, tell you what you need to do. And uh, I'll be using this here pretty soon to convert some stuff. But first, I want to talk to them boys and get their insights on how, how I need to do it and what I need to do with it. So I just want to give you all a little bit of that. This right here is a pound and three-quarter malted six-row barley. And uh, that's what we're going to be using in this corn today to be converting it. And we're going to save this back and use it at another time. So I'm going to let my corn cool down to 155 and I'm going to add this barley malt and we're going to convert the sugars and we're going to make us a 10 gallon of mash and see how it works. So y'all hang out with us and come right back. Alright guys, we're going to add our 6 row malted barley into this corn. It's really thick. Uh, Mr. Hilde will come over here and show you. I poured it off over in my mash barrel here so I can stir it a little bit better and it's going to stay 150, 155 anyway for long enough to do this. So we're just going to pour this off over in there and give her a good stir. Um, guys, if you're interested in this uh, High Stars Distillers corn, make sure you get on our website, stickycreek.com, and get you some ordered. Uh, it'll ship out the next day because we do have quite a bit of it in stock. Like I said, I'll have the Shiner Sam kit on there. And we may even have a kid on there with the six row barley that you could do this right here with so we're just trying to work on it and see what we could do because like i said this corn right here makes better liquor than any corn that i've ever used and I, i've always used white corn y'all know that but i i'm pretty stuck on this corn right here y'all come back here in a minute i'm gonna stir this up and let it do its thing hey guys well, we're back. I stirred and stirred and stirred. Miss Real Deal, come over here. I'll show you what's happened. This, remember how thick that corn was? See how thin it is now? That's the conversion happening right there. And a lot of the corn's falling back to the bottom. So it's converting them starches into sugar. Like I said, I don't want to have a full conversion or a complete all grain mash because I am probably going to add a little bit of sugar to this. I just wanted to see what we could get up to off a 10 pound of corn and 10 gallon mash. So I'm gonna add me some water to it, see how thin that is now? Almost like water. So it's done its job, the six row done its job. And uh, I'm gonna add some water to it now and some oxygen. We're gonna take a gravity reading and just see what kind of sugar, how much sugar we will need for this. So I'm gonna get this right here filled up up to my 10 gallon mark anyway and uh we're gonna see what take a hydron to reading so you come back here in just a minute and we'll have some more for you all right guys i've got it up to my 10 gallon mark it's probably around 11 gallons because of the amount of grain that's in it so uh, i'm gonna pop my hydrometer in here we're gonna see where she sits at after adding all that water to it with just 10 pound of grain we're sitting at 1.02. So that tells me I probably need five or six pounds of sugar in this mash, which is different than adding 10 or 12 pounds. So that worked out a lot better. And I think we're gonna have a better corn flavor in this mash anyway, which the way I usually do mine, because I make 55 gallon drums of mash, it's really hard to get equipment big enough to cook that much corn down. So I'll steep my corn in my barrels 
kind of like I'd give y'all in the instructions, I'll steep it with 190, 200 degree water for, you know, 45 minutes or so. And then that's, that gets my, a lot of starches out and stuff. But I don't never convert any sugars out of that. I use that just for flavor. And then my malt is my nutrient for my yeast. This right here is just a little different way of doing this. And you could do this as one of our kits. By all means, experiment, guys. Do what I did today. You're never going to have your own way unless you figure it out yourself. So uh, do what I did today. Experiment. Come up with something new. Get your own recipe going. Just remember, contact us at Sticky Creek Mountain Grain anytime you need any grain. Y'all come back here in a minute. We'll get the yeast through in this. We're going to see how she's going to work. All right, guys. I just added five pounds of sugar to this. I, in any of my mashes, I don't want a high gravity. I'm looking for 105 to 106. That, uh, your yeast is going to work a whole lot better. And then when you sour mash, it's just going to work a lot better. You know, I'm after quality, not quantity. Y'all already know that. So I'm wanting this to land around 105, 106. We already know it was at 102 just by converting 10 pounds of corn. We already know that. So I didn't have to add a full 10 pounds of sugar to this mash to make it where I want it to be. So y'all hang out right there. It is a pretty mash. I'm going to grab my hydrometer. We're going to see where we're at right now then. If I can see it, guys, I'm about blind anymore. We're dead on 1.06. So that was five pounds of sugar in a 10 gallon mash, and we're at 1.06. Uh, 1.06 is the bottom line on this orange, and that's where she's sitting at. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, and with this, I like this setup here for like small mashes. Now, I wouldn't be able to do that on, you know, two or three hundred gallon of mash. Unless I had big stainless steel pots and everything and steam. But this here is just the way you could do it in your garage if you're making five to thirty gallon mashes. So we're going to get us some yeast here. First, we're going to check the temperature. That sugar dissolved pretty good, so I don't know how hot it is. Oh, she's 98 degrees. We can pinch yeast. I'm just using regular old baker's yeast for this. Put it in there pretty good, pretty liberal. You can't, you can't over pitch that yeast, guys. You can put that whole bag in there and it won't change the flavor or nothing. What's going to change your flavor of this yeast is having too high a gravity. This yeast likes to work up to about 12% tops. Uh, you could push it, but 12% is pushing it. It usually ends up around 10%, and that's why I love all mine at, because then you retain all your flavor. You don't have real hot liquor. But uh, we'll let this sit here for a little while. See, I'm doing that. I'm drawing oxygen into my mash. I always draw oxygen into your mash. But it's a pretty mash. It looks good. We're going to let her sit here for a little while. We'll come back and see how she's working. All right, guys, this right here is that mash that we made today. If you look to cap it, it's about 30 minutes. It's done started working. Uh, she started working pretty good up under that cap. See there? Uh, that's after about 30 minutes. I'd say it's still probably rolling good in the morning. So she's working real good right now, as you can see. And out there is just a the mash that we made today. Hey, we love y'all. Y'all want your top knot? We'll see you later. All right, guys. There it is. That's my first video back on YouTube in a long time. I think we're going to be putting a whole lot more on here. we got a lot of neat stuff to show y'all. Uh, I'm going to have a bunch of stuff about liquor making, mash, grain, you know, all that stuff. We're also going to be showing you how to be self-sufficient. We're going to be doing some preserving meat videos. I think next week we're going to, we're going to cure some bacon, hang it up in the smokehouse, Show you all that process. It's an old school process, but that bacon could hang in this smokehouse for seven years. You know, and just go through some stuff like that. We're going to be canning some stuff and doing things like that. Going back to what we originally wanted to do, you know, uh, when we first started this, that's what we wanted. It was just more than moonshine. It was about life, about living, you know, and that's, that's the way we're going to get back to it. So I hope you all enjoy that video today. It's just something me and Miss Real Deal threw together to show you all that we're still here. And we're just trying to grow our channel. We're just trying to get out there and grow. Uh, remember, stickycreek.com. That's where you get that corn out of use today. It's a distiller's corn. 
non-GMO. It's an old school corn. I've got a whole bunch of it. And that stuff is awesome. I like it better than any corn that we sell. Uh, we'll be getting white corn in next month, here in the next two to three weeks. They're just now starting to combine it. The old crop corn has got a lot of weevils and bugs in it right now. So I just don't want to get that. Uh, we do have blue hopi in stock. And we do have a double red corn in stock. It's an old Indian corn that we do have in stock now. Uh, we do have six-row malted barley and six-row barley. So y'all get on the website and look. We do have some new things on the website. Like we have a, you can click on a button and it says ships next day. And that's everything that we have packaged and ready that can ship tomorrow. So if you order that today, tomorrow it'll ship. So Y'all get in there and check that out and uh, just see what we got new in there. We're going to be adding some more stuff to it as we go. Uh, there's a lot of grains that's going to come and go. So sometimes we'll have them, sometimes we won't. But I do know we're going to try to keep the white corn, and we will have that distiller's corn in stock at all times. So y'all get on stickycreek.com and check out our new website. But with all that said, guys, it's been a beautiful day. It's a beautiful evening. I think I'm going to go sit on the front porch and just enjoy the rest of my day and eat my supper. And uh, might get out here after dark and just listen to the whipper wheels. I don't know. But we love y'all. Y'all watch your talk not. See you soon.